Hello everyone, Karen here from tuppenscolour.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, this is what I've been making today. Very, very elegant and glamorous little gift box. Stay with me, I'll show you how I made it. These are the supplies that I'm going to be using today. Uh, I have a piece of the black foil card which uh, I need to cut so that it's big enough to fit through my big shot. So that's what, about six inches by about eight inches, something like that. I've got some scraps of card, I've got a scrap of Poppy Parade, some silver foil and some champagne foil. I've got some of the one eighth of an inch gold cord which is in the annual catalogue. Uh, stamping with a stamp from the Jar of Love set and I'm going to use Memento and Versamark and clear embossing, full, uh, embossing powder and of course I'm going to make my box out of the take out the thin nuts. I'm going to go over to the big shot and I'm going to do some die cutting and I'm going to cut out the box shape twice in the uh, black foil. I'm going to cut that shape, the banner, in silver. I'm going to cut that out of the real red. And I'm going to cut um, as many as I can of the hearts out of the champagne foil. So I'm going to go away and do that and I will be back. And here are my two black foil pieces. So I'm just going to uh, sharpen the folds and I'm going to be quite careful about this to make sure that they do sharpen nicely with my uh, with my folding tool. Okay. And take a little bit of time. together so I have put some of my liquid adhesive into a fine nozzled bottle and the reason why I've done that is because I do not want to mark the front of my box okay I'm not too bothered about the base we'll wipe that bit away though before it does any damage and now I'm just going to run a little bit of my liquid adhesive along these flaps put the top back on the liquid adhesive before the nozzle dries up I just need to bring this together carefully. I'm just going to hold that just for a couple of seconds. Come on, baby. And the next one. gluing a slick surface so it will take a little bit longer to grab than if it was just ordinary plain card um, yeah, really I should have got them up before I started I've got some little mini clothes pegs Out before I started, it's 
called Thinking Ahead. Not something that this channel is particularly known for. So I'm going to let that sit there, just like that, uh, for a little while until all the adhesive. I've die cut out my card in Poppy Parade and uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of sponging on it. Now it's a small piece so I'm not going to use the whole of my ink pad. So I've just put down a line of Poppy Parade, you just saw me do, and then that is real red and that is Cajun Craze. And I've got my sponges here and I'm going to start with my poppy parade and I'm going to start with a little bit of glycerine on the on the sponge which as you can see is a recycled one and I just put them in a little net bag in the washing machine um, and I'm just going to go all over that heart as you can see already it's giving it a bit more vibrance and next is real red And I'm going to keep this one more to the edges of the cutout. Okay, keeping away from the middle. And last of all, a little bit of Cajun Craze. Now I could have used something like a soft suede or crumb cake along the edge and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to give it a kind of shadow around the edge there so that it has some kind of a shape okay now that I'm going to give a good long time for the ink to dry and then I'm going to come back and do a little bit of stamping on it I'm going to stamp the sentiment onto my heart and I want it to be a uh, heat embossed, I want it to be shiny and I don't have any black embossing powder and Memento ink is dye based and uh, it doesn't actually uh, emboss very well unless it's uh, a very very new and juicy pad which mine isn't but never fear because we have a way around that so I've got my Stamparata set up and I'm going to pop my sentiment for you. So I'm going to line that up on my little bit of scrap grid paper and I've set my Stamparatus up with the with the sponge mat because this is a um, foot polymer stamp set. So I'm just going to pick that up onto the Stamparatus and I'm going to do a registration mark here and now I'm going to bring in the negative of my die cut and I'm going to get a bit of low tack tape and I'm just going to line that up the way I want it which I think is about there Right, and here is my um, here's my die cut, which has had time to dry, but nevertheless, I'm still going to be giving it a jolly good dollop of uh, embossing buddy. And you can see the difference that uh, that sponging has made to that that shape. Okay, so let's make sure I've got everything ready, and I've got my embossing powder handy. Yes, everything's good. Okay, so let's begin again with the Memento ink. Make sure that's where I want it and stamp that down onto my die cut heart. And it's perfect. Right, now comes the tricky bit. One second while I get my 
take my pad out. Okay, I'm going to clean off the stamp with my Simply Chamois, which as you can see is well loved. Now I have found that if you put it through the washing machine, um, a 40 degree wash, that's 40 degrees Celsius by the way, uh, you will get a, uh, you will get the coloured ink out of it, but Memento is a bit more persistent. But you know what? It's a tool. Uh, it's meant to, it's meant to get like that. It's not meant to be pristine clean. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm inking up that same stamp. Haven't moved it, haven't moved that. And I'm using Versamark. Now, if you haven't got one of these handy dandy um, stamp positioning tools, what you can do is stamp, uh, is ink up your stamp with the Versamark first and then put your coloured ink on top of it and then just stamp it. And then your Versamark will be on the top and you will be able to emboss it. Yes, I hope I'm making sense there. Okay, so give that plenty of welly. And I should now be able to bring in my clear embossing powder and ink that up. I'm just checking that I've got a couple of little spaces here and there where I don't want embossing powder so I'm just flicking those away with my brush. I'm going to bring that in so you can see it a bit better. Okay and I'm going to hold on to this one with a pair of tweezers and I'm going to heat it. So embossing tool, heat tool on high. Give it a couple of seconds to warm up. I thought about leaving this embellishment um, as it was, but I've decided I want it to be glossy. So I've got my Versamark ink pad, I've got some clear embossing, uh, powder ready and I'm just going to push that down onto my first mark pad and I'm going to use the lid of the pad to make sure I get a good coating of first mark and I'm just checking that, that is well covered and I'm just going to drop it into the embossing powder make sure it's coated go and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it and then uh, while it's still hot I'm going to drop it back into the powder and then heat it again and with any luck um, I'm going to do that a couple of times and with any luck then I will have a nice glossy <laughs> embellishment so I'm going to turn my heat gun on I'm going to turn the sound down and I'm going to speed things up and uh, we will be back soon And here is my box, which has had plenty of time for the adhesive to set. Uh, if I was in a big hurry, because I actually left this like a couple of days, put the project on one side and I'll come back to it, uh, I probably would have needed to take something like an emery board and to just rough up the panels where the adhesive is going to go so that it could absorb uh, more quickly. Um, but I wasn't in any particular hurry so I didn't do that, I just gave it lots and lots of time. So now I'm just going to close the box by put those two flaps in first and then these two pieces uh, slide into one another. So I need to make sure that they are lined up correctly and then the box just closes up just like that.
All right. Now it doesn't need anything else to hold it closed. That is a secure fastening. But I am going to use some of the gold cord, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I can't believe that I've only just really spotted this in the annual catalogue. Okay, so that's quite a generous length I've cut there, which is about two feet, something like that. But uh, measure it, measure it off to make sure that the we are. Uh, I've tied a knot. Okay, I'm just going to leave the ends dangling. And now I'm going to bring in this piece, which I've cut out with my dies. And that's going to go over the top, just like that. So I'm going to get my glue dots, I think, for this. Given that the box is pretty shiny. And see, I peel back the foil a bit there. Push that down. Let's pretend nobody saw that. <laughs> so let me have a think. How am I going to want to position this? I think like that it looks pretty cute. So let's have a glue dot on there. And another one there. Now the die to cut out this little banner, it puts all these cute little folds in. I haven't picked up a glue dot. I thought I had, but I haven't. Yeah. And as I was saying, the die puts these cute little folds in. So, you know, all you've got to do is just basically fold along the crease marks and you are done. Okay. So now here is my heart embellishment. Look how super glossy that is. And if you're wondering, well, why didn't you just put, uh, why didn't you just put Versamark and embossing folder over the whole thing, uh, and not bother to enamel the uh, the wording first? Uh, the answer to that is was well, twofold actually. One is um, I didn't think I was going to do it, uh, and the other is um, to prevent the Versamark from kind of spreading into the uh, into into the memento or vice versa prevent the memento spreading into the versa mark and uh, making it blurry making my stamping uh, you know making my stamping look smudged so let me see what shall we put there shall we have a dimensional why not they're down here beside me tweezers oops Um, now, when I heat embossed the heart, uh, I did it the the way of, um, you know, heat embossing it, throwing straight back into the powder, heat embossing again, putting it straight back into the powder. But if you want to, you can give it, um, you know, you can give it a few coats of Versamark. So you could heat emboss, let it cool, put more Versamark on it, heat emboss again, let it cool, put, put, put more Versamark on it. And Heating, heating boss again. All right, it's entirely up to you which way you do it. You get a good result either way. Okay, so that's coming along nicely. So I've still got these stars that I uh, cut out of the champagne foil. So let's trim off my extra gold cord. And we're just... Um, Pop a few of these around the sides of the box. And again, I'm going to use glue dots because uh, of the very shininess of the of the foil. All right, and let's pop a few glue dots on ready. where I want them. Well, I definitely want one around there and I want one 
one here. Oops, that's another one that's come away without without a glue dot. Glue dots like to play games with me. There we go. Where was I going to put that one? I was going to put it there, wasn't I? One left over. So where should we put this? Oh, it's come away without the glue dot again. Okay, three trays for a Welshman. A Welshwoman in my case. And we'll pop that one just about there. And there you are. There is my very glamorous box. Pretty much finished. And there it is, that is the finished gift box. And uh, I do love this little uh, this little mini takeout box. I think it is just so sweet. And I really like the way uh, it came out with the glossy black foil. So I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if so, don't forget to click that like button, uh, subscribe to my channel, why not be a devil? Come back and see me again sometime soon, won't you? But for now, thank you very much for joining me. Bye bye.